We'll do some excellent core training. And we'll do some prolonged holds. We know that's a big deal for our group because it helps people to have some time to get into the positions. And also it allows some time for intentional focus on the task at hand. Pressing into the floor. Nice deep breath. Reach out. We'll bring the palms together. Breathe out as we lower them down. And then we'll fold forward. Halfway lift with a nice flat back. Fold forward again. We'll reach out. Rising up. Keep the arms up here and we'll sink into chair pose. Head up, chest up, arms up. Spread those fingers. Try to push your bottom back behind you. We'll hold it for three deep breaths. Two deep breaths. One deep breath. And then we'll reach out, rising up. Bring the palms in again. Lower down. Lower fold. Halfway lift. Forward fold. And we'll do it again. We'll reach out, breathing in. Keep the arms up. Sink again into chair pose. Head up, back up, chest out. This time we'll hold it for two deep breaths. In and out. In and out. Reach out, rising up, palms together, forward fold, halfway lift with a nice straight spine, forward fold again, here comes our final chair pose for now, we'll reach out, rising up. All, or reach, keep the arms up and we'll sink. Chair pose, hold it here for one deep breath in and out. We're going to rise up, step the right foot towards the top of your mat, left foot, toes turn into the corner. We're going to bend that front knee, reach up for warrior one, head up, back up, sink the weight down between your feet, both feet evenly taking the weight here. Turn the left foot out to the side, the back foot out to the side, and reach those arms out at shoulder height for warrior two. So we got a nice bend in the right knee, back leg is straight, arms at shoulder height, head up, chest out, shoulder blades back. We'll hold it here for three, big, slow, Deep breaths. Two deep breaths. <clears throat> One deep breath. Right palm up. Left hand to the back of your left leg. Let's tilt back. Reaching overhead. Humble warrior, we'll hold it here. If you're leaning back towards your back leg, your left leg, and you got the arm over the top. 
Two more deep breaths. Let's come up. Keep that right knee bent. Let's put the right forearm on the thigh. Left arm reaches overhead at an <coughs> angle, straight arm. And we're trying to reach it in line with the left foot. So it should go straight line from heel to hip to shoulder to fingertips. Look up at that left hand, feeling that side of the body opening up. We'll hold it for three slow, deep breaths. We can sink a little lower into it by bringing that right hand down towards the ankle, turning the chest more to the side and reaching that left hand up towards the ceiling. So hopefully your chest is pointed to the left of your mat and we're holding it here Taking in the good life. Come on up. Let's change the lead foot. Left foot in front. <clears throat> we'll step the right foot back. We'll bend that left knee. Arms up. Chest out. Head up. Warrior one. And if you feel really wobbly here, you know you can widen your stance. So instead of having your heels pretty well lined up, you can just bring them out wider, more like a Tai Chi stance, where your feet are at least as wide as your hips, and hopefully that gives you a little bit more stability. God knows I need stability in my life, Mike. Isn't that true? We all do. Why shop at Costco? Let's move forward. <laughs> Arms out, chest out, warrior two. We can look off in the distance beyond the fingertips of the left hand. We can squeeze those shoulder blades back. We got the left knee bent. We got the right knee straight. And we're feeling good. It's Friday, and we're getting mindfully in tune with our bodies. Right hand to the back of the right leg. Left hand, palm up. Lean back towards that right leg. Reach that left hand overhead. And we'll hold it here for three lovely, slow, deep breaths. Slowly coming up out of it, let's bring the left forearm to the left thigh. Right arm reaches overhead in a nice straight position. And we've got a straight line, hopefully, from ankle of the right foot to hip, to right shoulder, to right hand. And we'll just hold it and breathe. A little bit deeper of a twist here. We can bend that front knee a little bit more generously. Reach the left hand down towards the left ankle. And you might just turn your chest out to the side. 
or if you want to get a little bit more twist with that chest, reach the right arm up towards the ceiling. You can ground yourself here too by pushing forward on the mat with the front leg, pushing backward on the mat with the back leg, almost like you're trying to tear the mat apart with the grip of your feet. Then we can bring that right arm over and down to the floor. Or if you need a yoga block, you can put it on a yoga block. Left foot down or left hand down to the floor. We can walk the feet back or go back on the knees. And push those hips back into downward facing dog. And here we can get a little bit flexibility in those calves and feet by just bicycling the legs a little bit, picking one heel up a little bit, put the other heel down. Just take our time here for a moment. Hello, Boba. I think this is her favorite part of class. Then let's drop one knee. We can drop the other knee. We can widen those knees out towards the edge of the mat. And then we can sit back. Sit the hips back towards your heels. Reach those arms out as far as you can in front. Drop the chest down. We can rest the forehead on the mat, taking a short break here in child pose. Hmm. This pose is great for opening up tightness in your hips and your low back. And apparently it saves lives. That's even better. And as we're sitting here in child pose, you might try to get rid of some tightness in your shoulders by engaging those palms with the floor, just pressing them slightly down, but keeping your arms straight. And while you have that light contraction in your arms, you might sink the hips back further if you can. And from this position, we can do some nice deep belly breathing, giving the organs a nice gentle massage as Yoli taught us in the past. Slow, deep belly breathing. In for a two or a three count. Out for a three or a four count. Because we know even in the absence of exercise, slow, deep belly breathing, using that diaphragm to expand the lungs, it helps you increase the oxygenation of the blood. It helps clear the body of a stress hormone. Well, a few stress hormones. And it gets that rib cage moving a little bit more than normal. We're going to come up from this in a moment and we're going to start shifting forward and backward slowly. So let's press down into the palms, slowly bring the head up and chest up. We're shifting the hips forward here. Try to keep the arms pretty straight and drop the hips down, looking up. And then slowly, start peeling those hips up. 
the rocking back little by little into child pose. We're just gonna shift here slowly, forward and backward. Take your time with it. And get in touch with your breath. A lot of times in a traditional yoga class, you'd probably breathe <clears throat> in through one part of the motion and out through the other. But we like going slower here, so I'm gonna propose that you breathe in as you start rising up and out slowly as you drop the hips down, keeping the head up and the back up, shoulders up. And then we'll breathe in as we bring the hips back up, out as we start sinking the hips back towards the heels. Do just a few more of these. In, shifting forward, out, lowering the hips. Again, in, bringing the hips up, and out, back. One more, in. Out. And this time, instead of sitting all the way back in child pose, let's walk those hands back underneath the shoulders, walk the knees underneath the hips, and here we are in tabletop. We can drop the chest down and look up. Puff the spine up towards the ceiling. Push the shoulder blades apart and tuck the chin in towards the chest. Little cat cow here. Take your time with it. Rounding out the spine with the chest going down towards the floor. And then we're bringing the chest up arching the back up towards the ceiling. Nice, low movement. Try to feel each vertebrae in your spine moving. Try to move it one segment at a time. As we know, Slower brings more concentration and awareness to movement. And it also can help you fight through some stiffness. Trying to go a little further in each direction each time. After your next cycle, that cow, you're going to start lowering down to the mat. So how can we do that? We can bring a forearm down and the other. We can walk one leg back, the other leg back, we can drop the hips down. And let's take a moment here, palms on the floor, forearms on the floor, fingers spread. We can start with the head, the forehead on the mat, and we're going to bring our shoulder blades in towards the spine and down towards your back pockets here. I want you to try to keep your shoulder blades back and down like this. And we're going to start peeling the forehead up off of the floor, little by little. And peeling the chest up, little by little, but keeping those forearms engaged with the floor. Lower down, slowly. 
We'll do it again. Shoulder blades back and down. Forehead starts lifting up. Chest starts peeling up little by little. Pushing down into those forearms just a bit. And then we're lowering down with good control. Let's do just a couple more of these. Shoulder blades back and down. Peel that forehead up. Peel the chest up. Push those forearms into the floor. Come back. How about one more? One more. Make it your best one yet. Shoulder blades back and down. Peel the forehead up. Peel the chest up. Push into those forearms. Let's hold it here for three slow, deep breaths. In and out. Hopefully you feel wonderful because we're in Sphinx pose. And that's one of the great wonders of the world. Really push those hips into the floor. Legs straight as an arrow. We'll hold it for three, two, one. Both legs, here we go. Push those hips into the floor. Raise both feet up, both thighs up any amount. Hold it for three, two, one, lower down. We're gonna do two more cycles of that. And we know that's a big deal for helping with low back pain and for helping with spinal mobility and core stability. And let's again, engage those hips in the floor, press them in. Right leg only, lift it up, hold it for three, Two, one, put it down, left leg only here, hips are engaged in the floor, we'll lift the left leg up, three, two, one, lower it down, engage those hips again, press them into the floor, both legs up, three, two, one, lower down, one more cycle of these. We'll take a mini rest here, a deep breath in and out, and we'll just say, I can do this. Yeah, buddy. Hips into the floor again. Right leg only. Hold it. Three. Two. One. Lower it down. Hips into the floor. Left leg only. Three. Two. One. Put it down. Hips into the floor again, both legs, here we go. Three, two, one, lower them down. Let's do just a couple of both legs up and down here. Inhale, bring them up. Exhale, lower them down. Inhale, bring them up. Exhale, lower them down. Inhale, bring them up. Exhale, bring them down. Just two more. Breathe in, floating those legs up. Out, letting them down. Last one. In and out. 
Okay. Let's do some work with our arms now, huh? We'll reach both arms out overhead towards the top of the mat. We can rest the forearm or the forehead on the floor. We got the arms out in front like we're doing the letter Y from the YMCA dance. Thumbs up towards the ceiling, fingertips pointed out. Let's again engage those hips into the floor. And let's raise the right arm up. Any amount off the floor, arms straight as an arrow, put it down. Same thing with the left arm. We'll engage those hips in the floor. Pick the arm up any amount. Put it down. Engage those hips into the floor. Both arms up. Down. Let's do a few cycles there. Hips into the floor. Right arm up. Hold it, and down, hips into the floor, left arm up, hold it, put it down, hips into the floor, both arms up, any amount, put it down, it's harder, isn't it? Isn't that great? Hips into the floor, right arm only up, and down, left arm only up, and down, both arms up, and down, right arm again, up, down, left arm again, up, down, both arms up, down, look at us. Let's bring the elbows out to the side, like we're making the letter W with our arms. W. And let's, earlier we were pressing the forearms into the floor. Instead, this time, bring those shoulder blades in towards the spine and back down towards your back pockets. Get the forearms off the floor any amount. Push those hips into the floor. And let's start peeling the forehead up little by little. Head up little by little. Chest up little by little. We're trying to get the upper body off the floor without pushing down into the floor with the arms. Lower down little by little. And we'll reset. Isn't that awful? But it's so good. Shoulder blades back and down. Forearms off the floor. We're making the letter W for winners. Like us, oh, hips whatever. forward, peel up, 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 hold it, three deep breaths, two deep breaths, one deep breath, back down, let's do it again. Shoulder blades, forearms, hips into the mat, heel up, 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 hold it, three deep breaths, two deep breaths, one deep breath, back down, if you want to add a challenge here, raise the legs with it. 
If, if the arms are enough, that's okay. But let's bring the shoulder blades back and down. Elbows and forearms up off the floor. Hips engaged to the floor. Legs up. Peel the head up and chest up. Hold it. Three deep breaths. Push those hips forward. Two deep breaths. Squeeze those shoulder blades back. One deep breath. Take in the good life. Lower down. Let's roll onto your side here. Left forearm into the into the mat. Hips pointing to the right side of your mat. We'll get the elbow directly beneath the shoulder. We'll try to bring the hips forward a bit so we've got a straight line from knee to hip to shoulder. And let's really push into that floor. Breathe out and push those hips up. Down. Again. Up. And down. Other side. Right forearm into the mat. Hips stacked up. Knees, hips, chest pointed to the left side of the mat. We can get that elbow, that right elbow, directly beneath the shoulder. And then, kind of bring that fist to the side of the mat. So you've got to kind of up, yeah, and then pull that elbow in a little more. Um, so, forearm should be kind of parallel with the top of your mat. And then bring that elbow underneath your shoulder. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. And then we can push into that mat and we can try to pop the hips up any amount. Lower down. Again, push into the mat, engage that forearm, hips up any amount. Back down with good control. Just a couple more. Up. Down. One more. Up. I've had my morning facial. Thanks to both. Down. Let's make our way onto our backs. And let's tuck those shoulder blades in towards the spine. You can rest your hands on your stomach or down by your sides. Let's bring those heels in close to the hips. So we got our knees bent, heels up towards the cheeks. And then we'll push the hips up little by little. Go a little higher than you think you can. And then let's lower on down, nice and slowly. One vertebrae of the spine at a time, making contact with the floor. Take a little rest with a breath here, in and out. And then we can breathe in deeply. Push those hips up as we let the breath out little by little. Push them through those heels into the floor. If you're getting any cramping in your hamstrings, walk the heels up closer to your butt. Like what? Yep. Again. Hips up little by little. See if you can go up a little higher this time. 
And then see if you can lower a little more slowly. Again. Up, up, up. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> Lower down. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Up little by little. <laughs> Knees bent. We might as well bring the feet in a little closer to each other and just start slowly rocking the knees side to side. We all need attention and love. Lovely and gentle. I on my nose. <laughs> He's rocking. But keep those shoulder blades on the floor. Indeed. After your next round of side to side, pause with your knees in the middle point it up towards the ceiling. And we're going to go for a prolonged low back stretch here. So what we can do is first, we can bring those arms out to the side. We can straighten the left. Shoulders on the mat. Exactly. Shoulder blades stay on the floor. We're just turning those hips to the left side of the body. Palms down or palms up, right? Either is fine. Okay, and if that's not enough of a stretch into your low back, you might bring your right foot over to the other side of your left leg. See how that feels. Damn. That feels like a good stretch. Stay there. If you need a little bit more, you might bring your right knee up a little bit and then use your left hand to kind of push down gently onto that left knee. But again, we're trying to keep the chest pointed up to the ceiling, shoulder blades on the mat, and we're holding it here for some slow, deep breaths in and out. And we all know there's a big difference between muscle tightness that you feel stretching and back pain, like a sharp ache. But try not to, if you feel like it's back pain, try to back off slowly. Ease off little by little. But with each breath here, we can try to breathe some relaxation into the low back. With each breath out, we can feel things relax even more. We're breathing in relaxation. We're breathing out. Things are easing even more. Just a bit longer. You know, after long duration stretches like this, it's important to ease your way out gently. Try to move abruptly, it's just really uncomfortable. So let's slowly start backing your way out of the stretch, little by little. Working our way back to where we started with the hips on the floor, knees bent. And then let's straighten out the right leg. Again, we really want to keep 
the shoulder blades on the floor and the chest pointed up towards the ceiling. We can slowly start turning those hips over to the right. And that might be enough of a stretch. If you feel like you can go deeper, bring that left foot over to the other side of the body, over to the right side of the body. And that might be enough of a stretch. If it is, just hold it there. If it's not, you can use that right hand. <laughs> Give a little gentle pressure, helping that left knee down towards the floor a little bit more. But again, we're keeping the head up towards the ceiling, chest up towards the ceiling. When you're in your deep stretch here, let's start doing some slow, deep breaths. In and out. In and out. Little yoga here. Couple more slow, deep breaths here. Let's slowly start backing our way out of that stretch. Take your time with it. Ease your way out. Bend those knees. Take advantage of any flexibility we might have gained here and just see the difference by rocking the knees gently side to side again like we were earlier. Slowly, big, gentle rocking. We feel like you can go a little further than before. Few of those. Pause again with the knees pointed up towards the ceiling. Let's hug the right knee towards the chest and straighten out the left leg. We can pull that knee in. From here, let's activate that left leg. Keep it straight as an arrow. Puff your low back into the floor. Try to keep it from arching up. Press that low back down into the floor. And if you can, pick that left heel up just an inch or so off the floor. And we'll hold it here. Lower that left leg down. Lower the right foot to the mat. Great sides. We'll bend the left knee. Straighten the right. Let's hug that left knee up towards the chest. Oh, we've got the left leg getting hugged in towards the chest, hugging the left knee in. We got the right leg straight. We're just holding it for another moment. And hopefully we can hug both knees into the chest. Slowly and start 
rocking those hips, rocking those knees a little bit side to side. Trying to get a nice gentle massage from the floor. Or if you want to do slow circles, that's a okay too. You're doing circles after a few change directions. You're going side to side, just keep going side to side. Get one more nice stretch here. Again, we'll bend both knees, heels on the floor. And this time, let's cross the right ankle over the left knee. And we'll draw the toes up on that right foot towards your shin. That'll help protect your knee ligaments. We've got kind of a triangle that we've made with the right leg. We can reach through that triangle with the right hand. Left hand can reach outside the left side of the left leg. We're going to try to hug the left leg or the left knee up towards you. Yeah. We're just going to do some slow pelvic tilts. So think of this as you've got one of those big old rodeo belt buckles. Oh boy. Currently, oh. currently your belt buckles pointed up towards the ceiling. We're going to press the low back into the floor and tilt the pelvis to try to point our belt buckle, our imaginary belt buckles back just a bit towards like where the ceiling meets the wall. But it's not quite pointed up to your face, it's somewhere between pointing your face and pointing at the ceiling. And we're just gonna take a moment for a few of those. Take it slow, turn in that imaginary belt buckle up towards where the ceiling meets the wall, and then back down with the pelvis. Let's sit up tall. We're just wrapping up yoga class. Let's sit up tall. Backs up straight. Heads up high. Take a few deep breaths. That's just a sign things are moving. That's all. That's a good thing. It means things are working. Let's yeah, take a deep right. breath here. We'll reach out, breathing in. Lower the palms down to the heart space here. We could bring the hands to the forehead, reminding us to have kind and loving thoughts. Hands over the mouth, reminding us to use kind and loving words. Hands over the heart space, reminding us to have kind and loving intentions. We nailed it again. Namaste. Namaste.